Hi, everyone. Welcome to Absolute Trust Talk. I'm the host of this episode, Kirsten Howe, and I'm really glad you're here today. I'm really looking forward to having you get to know my guest today. This is another example of someone who's doing something really helpful, really important, and everybody needs to know about it. So these are my favorite kind of episodes where I get to share a resource, an invaluable resource with my listeners and viewers. My guest today is Jennifer Fink, and she is the creator and host of a podcast called Fading Memories. And this is a podcast for caregivers who take care of folks with dementia specifically, um, which can, of course, be a very difficult, draining, and lonely job. So I'm really delighted to be able to share this with you. Jennifer is a retired portrait photographer who took on responsibility for her mother's care um, after her father died. Her mother, just like her grandmother and her great-grandmother, um, had Alzheimer's, actually Alzheimer's. Um, Jennifer was a big fan of podcasts at the time, probably still is since she's a podcaster, <laughs> but couldn't find, couldn't find a, a podcast for what she was experiencing that she thought found really helpful to her. So being the ingenious and um, entrepreneurial person that she is, she just decided I'm going to make my own podcast. And that's why she's here today. She's going to be talking about her podcast, Fading Memory. She's been at it for three and a half years. She has many more episodes in the can than I do, although we've been podcasting about the same length of time. So this is a, just a really great resource. Jennifer, welcome and thank you so much for being here today. Well, thank you for having me. I'm always excited to talk about what I'm doing. It's kind of part of being a podcaster, we like to talk. <laughs> right. <laughs> of course. So we're we're just delighted to have you. Tell tell us about how you how this came about, how you decided I I need to start a podcast. Well, portrait photography technology was sort of kicking the daylights out of that industry, which is sad, and that could be a whole other episode. Uh, people are eventually only people who have a lot of means are going to be able to afford the quality of family portraits that I was doing. And so being out here in the suburbs, I was constantly battling the people who wanted to be able to do it themselves and couldn't. And it just, it just was becoming a lot of work chasing less and less money. I was, as you mentioned, a podcast listener. I was listening to side hustle school, which is a podcast that talks about people's side hustles They've got some parameters to be on their show. You have to make a certain amount of money and things like that. And he talked about how to use a podcast to boost like your sales or your service. I mean, I've seen real estate podcasts and insurance podcasts. I think there's even a funeral home podcast, which is <laughs> probably not one I'll be diving into. But, you know, why it's, not? Valu it's valuable information. And if I hadn't gone through the process with my dad and then my mom, then I'm, you know, I might, I might be curious enough to check it out, but I, I think I got a good handle on that. And so one day I was at the gym back in those days when we didn't work out at home. And I said, <laughs> duh, like, why didn't I think about looking for an Alzheimer's caregiver podcast? Because there's a podcast on everything, right? You know, funeral homes. Pretty children. much. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> and at the time, this was late 2017. There was, there literally was one that wasn't medical or research oriented and it just wasn't my cup of tea, which is fine. We all can't like all the same things. And so I just got this crazy idea just to do it myself. I thought I had a lot of wisdom to share. That would have been maybe six months of podcasts. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> and it, I, as I started talked to other people, people from the Alzheimer's Association, people that did, um, our neighbor had, she does um, therapy dogs. There we go. I'm like, I, I can think of that word. And so I talked to her. And once I kind of went through all the people that I knew, I realized I still had a lot of questions. And the more I talked to people, the more questions I had. So I just started searching out people that could answer the questions I had because I figured, well, I'm a caregiver. So if I'm asking these questions, somebody else must be asking these questions. And here I am almost 200 episodes later, a little tired, 
<laughs> That's but great. Yeah. I'm, I am still learning from my guests, which is exciting because I call myself the caregiver to caregivers because my mom passed away right at the beginning of the pandemic last year, which has a lot of its own challenges and struggles. It's, it's different than losing somebody in normal times, if we know what those are anymore. So I feel like if I'm still learning, then my audience is still learning. Good. And well, tell us a little more about your experience as a caregiver for your mom and, and her dementia, her Alzheimer's. I'm sure a lot of our listeners will relate to some of your experiences. Well, my dad did most of the caregiving until 2016. He had his own chronic illnesses. He was diabetic and he wasn't, he wasn't the best of patients. So he didn't follow a diabetic diet as, as closely as he should have. So he, he just kept layering one problem on top of another and about, so 2016 was five years ago, right? Good Lord. <laughs> it's like, um, about this time, five years ago, he started calling me and, and saying really strange things. Like he wanted to get a gun because he was really concerned that Hillary Clinton was going to steal, you know, take his guns. And I'm like, Whoa, why do you need a gun? Like you live in a nice suburban neighborhood in a safe city. I mean, as safe as any, you know, towns are. And I, and they lived across the street from an elementary school directly across the street from the um, kindergarten yard. So I tried to appeal to him on the, this would not be safe because of mom, blah, blah, blah. And there was just like all these red flags, but because he did 90% of the caregiving. He did not want help from my sister and I. He was a buffer. So right. after he passed away, it was like, holy Toledo, this woman is- There's a lot person. of problems here. Yeah. Well, she was further along than I suspected. I mean, yeah. there, like I had an, a, an idea of how bad it was. And then when it's confirmed and then you realize- Yikes, this is worse than I thought. So I would go visit her in the memory care and she would ask me the same question literally like every three minutes. And, you know, after a couple of those visits, it's like, I got I to gotta find a way to connect with her better because, you know, she was 74 at the time and I, her mom lived to 91. So I kind of assumed she had like, you know, 10 or 15 oh. years. That is what we were planning on. And I thought, I, I, I can't do this for 10 or 15 years. I can't do this for another 10 or 15 yeah. visits. And so that's kind of how the podcast got started as well. I was, I was trying to find ways to connect okay. with her. Okay. So you were looking for your own answers. Like, mm -hmm. what, what can I do here? This is hard. My mom really, you know, is on a loop when I'm with her. How do I break through that? Well, you did share with me when we were talking before the episode, one of the, the tools or techniques you discovered as a result of doing your podcast. It, and I think it's brilliant. Why don't you uh, share that? Is this the one where I realized that answering her that she thought I was her best friend? That one? You can talk about that one. I was thinking about the photographs. Oh, yes. So I just recently interviewed a gal um, now I can't remember which episode it is because I've been really kind of busy again, <laughs> but she talked about how she used what she calls now and then photos. So one of the common bits of advice that just back, not backfired, but failed miserably for me was, you know, look through old photo albums and reminisce about the old days. Cause you know, generally they're, short-term memory goes first, you know, they kind of lose memory backwards. So that they makes still, sense. Yeah. So they still have the long-term memory. Exactly. Yeah. Now, I don't know if this didn't work because she didn't recognize me as her daughter. She thought I was her best friend or if she was further along in the disease, but I would take my sister years ago, made a scrapbook of the two of us kind of as children in into like, middle school and high school, not quite so much, but mostly our childhood years. And my sister's got dark brown hair, chocolate brown eyes, olive skin, would freak out if she weighed as much as I do. And obviously I have blonde hair and green eyes and sunburn at the, just the thought of going outside. 
So <laughs> it should have been very obvious that this this picture of the brown haired child and this picture of the blonde child, you know, I kind of thought it would be like she, she could make the connection. Yeah. Yeah, not at all. Didn't recognize the kids in the pictures, didn't recognize them when I told her. So the guest that I was interviewing was, she says she uses a now and then. So if I had used an older picture of myself and maybe a picture of childhood and then a current picture, because one of the challenges that I gave my mom was I lost a hundred pounds. Oh. So not only did I not look like the person in her memory, you know, right. that's, that was another reason she thought I was her friend. So to use the now and then photos was, I mean, it was just one of those ideas where it's like, you know, I'm almost 200 episodes in. I've never had anybody suggest that. I'm a photographer. I've never thought like, oh, you know, and so this is why well, the podcast keeps going because. Yeah, exactly. That's why it's so valuable because there's some little thing that is going to change the world for somebody who's listening to you and that that one thing changed it for you and your mom yeah it could have you know because and i'm thinking like the one day so this was september of 2019 my husband and i had come back from colorado and anybody that's traveled through the denver airport knows that that is just always a hang-up point so getting out of denver was like we were delayed and i got home very late and i knew that if i if i was tired or stressed or letting my to-do list run through my head, which is a problem I have all the time. My mom would sense those vibes. And I didn't even have to be like anxious or upset, but just like less than 100% perky, which is not necessarily my personality generally. So I thought, okay, I've learned from past experiences. You know, we got home late, I'm a little tired. So it was also my wedding anniversary. So I took my wedding album and a piece of, double chocolate spice bread that I made and we just sat there and just she went through it and she had no clue who any of those people were and she was responsible for putting that book together she's in it I mean it was just like she just was enjoying looking at the she picture enjoyed it yeah she and, enjoyed and it. because I'd already gone through the experience of trying to bring out old memories you know past memories with photo albums and scrapbooks and just having that fail spectacularly my expectations were like zilch. <laughs> so there was no disappointment or hard feelings or sadness. It was just like, hey, I'm giving her a nice afternoon. And that's all yeah. that matters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, that's that's kind of, I guess, um, like an overarching lesson in dealing with dementia is you just kind of have to go with what happens and mm -hmm. not put too much expectation on it because you can't. Um, that's really a sweet story. Thanks for, for sharing that. So what are some of the topics you've covered um, in your show that people really liked and that you didn't really expect them to like that kind of surprised you? Well, the ones that they I think they will not like are generally the more technical ones like Medicare Explained and, you know, burial insurance. Now, they didn't really like that one, but I think that was not the information it was the way the guy presented it it's kind of my opinion he was he wasn't really salesy but he kept referring back to his book mm -hmm. so and i kept trying to get him to answer questions mm -hmm. um and i also did one on long-term care insurance there's another one medicare there was another one i did i was like oh this guy's the, the people are gonna hate this so the technical ones like that always surprised me that people like but the mm -hmm. ones that have benefited me that were a surprise. Um, I did yoga for caregivers and that's a really Aww. great story. And it kind of, you know, it's, it's a really good story because she had a health issue. Her husband had health issues. She was trying to take care of her parents. I mean, that's just like, it's way too much. And she demonstrated like literally, literally like five or 10 minute poses and, and practices you can do because you know, when you're a caregiver, if you got five or 10 minutes, that's a goal. That's gold. You're not going <laughs> to get an hour to right. get all into, you know, get, get all this. suited up and, yeah. and stretched out. And then, yeah. yeah. Just and and then be on up and cool down. Yeah. It's like, exactly. it's like having a, a newborn. you got, there's a nap. You got, you know, you got 20 minutes. <laughs> Go for it. <laughs> exactly. And, and, and to your point, like a newborn, 
Now you might want to sleep if they're sleeping because sometimes your sleep is disrupted. But if if you're if you've had enough sleep and you're refreshed, then you need to take that time you to need. do something for yourself. Ignore right. the laundry, the dishes, the whatevers. Take 20 minutes every day for yourself because if you burn out, who is going to take care of your person? Who's going to take care of you? We had a medical crisis. My dad ended up in the hospital for 32 days. We had to bounce my mom between my house, my sister's house. Her sister came over and took care of her. It was freaking chaos, which is terrible for other, most of us. Really bad for somebody who There's doesn't. Someone with dementia. Right. Exactly. Yeah. You don't know what's going on. She started right. getting hostile. The dog started getting hostile. It was not good. So that I use that as an example because with dementia, and I think my dad experienced this, is in the beginning stages, it's it's easy to apply some memory techniques, you know, the mm -hmm. reminders in your phone, post-it notes on the wall, both. And my mom's progression was very slow. She had Alzheimer's for at least 20 years. So in the beginning, you just make some little minor adjustments and you move forward. And then maybe a couple of years in, you make some more, you know, all of a sudden now they need some more help and right. you've already changed your normal baselines. Now you make some more adjustments and you do this and you do this and you do this and you think, okay, I got this. I'm doing great. And the next thing you know, you're up to here in caregiving with no help. You need help. You want to run screaming into the street. And now you've created a crisis on your own. So I always, always advocate plan ahead early. If you get a diagnosis or even if you suspect your family member has this problem, I have on my website articles I've written on how to put together a care team. And one of the articles actually came from an episode where I talked to another podcaster and his mom on the care committee that their family put together. And I hold them up as a blueprint for what all of us should do because they just did it. They made it look so easy. And so I, I kind of tweaked what he told me and put, put that out there in writing. So, you know, and I, and I reiterate that advice all the time. So we can, you know, I don't want to like drag that one out, but the other episode that benefited me tremendously was the gentleman, his name is Scott Lavitt, and I talked to him about mindfulness. Now, I am not into meditation, although I probably should be. My <laughs> brain doesn't shut off. Like it just, <laughs> and so I just, I can't do the whole, just sit there and empty. No, it just doesn't work. And he described a technique that I used when my mom was in the hospital, back up half a step, my mom got more and more combative, the more help she needed, the less she wanted, the less she accepted. She was battling with the caregivers. This is entirely on her, nothing they did wrong. She fell and broke her leg. And we all know when a, an older person falls and breaks their leg, it's not usually good. Right. And that's what happened with my mom. So right. while she was in the hospital and I'm like trying to figure out, you know, do I, because she needed surgery to repair the leg anesthesia on somebody with advanced Alzheimer's is generally not a good idea. The surgeon said she'd need physical therapy with or without the surgery. And, you know, I'm just like, literally my brain was just going a mile a minute. And I literally felt the explosion building up in me. It was like oh. Mount St. Helens. And it was during the very beginning of the pandemic, which is me and the yeah. hubby here. And I knew what was going to happen. I was going to explode, come unglued, be, you know, unhinged. We'd have a fight. The whole day was going to be horrible. And I was just like, oh, and I, I'm like, fortunately had like one last rational brain cell. And I'm like, wait, Scott said, Scott to, do said to do this. <laughs> he said, when you feel a very intense emotion, stop, which I did and say, this is what I did. Hello, anger. Why are you here? And immediately all the anger drained out of my body. And I went, I just want the best for my mom. It still makes me cry. Wow. I was like, Aww. I just want the best for my mom. And literally poof, the anger just, it disappeared like, like a Disney princess movie. It just poof, it went away. I was like, holy crap, this really works. <laughs> well, 
There you go. That's a, a very, very useful tool, tool. And you brought that to a whole lot of listeners by having him on your podcast. So. Yeah, he has a really uh, popular Facebook page. And, you know, it's just, it's like uh, mindfulness for caregivers, I think is what it's called. Sorry, Scott. I just remember this story. But it's like literally in 30 seconds, I went from about to just make everybody's day horrible to like feeling like the best daughter on the planet. And I'm like, Ooh, okay, this works. I'm happy about this. Well, yeah. I mean, caregivers are very um, hard on themselves, right? You already were the best daughter on the planet. You just didn't realize it. <laughs> I knew I was doing the best I could, but there were days when it's just like, and I think this is a very common, uh, I don't want to say problem, but it, common thought is because you're working so hard to keep them safe, to make them happy and comfortable, and you're doing all the things and they're just getting worse and worse and worse, which is the progression of the disease. It, yeah. It's never going to get better. Yeah. Exactly. And, and they're getting worse is no reflection. You could be a great caregiver or a mediocre caregiver. You could be taking care of them 24 seven in at your home or visiting them once a week, like I did in a memory care community, their progression yeah. has no reflection on you. Yeah, and, and that's <clears throat> that's hard. That's hard to accept and to yeah. really take in. Um, all right, so I know you've mentioned that you are kind of coming up on your 200th episode, which is very, very impressive. And, <laughs> and that's gonna come out um, in January? January fourth, twenty twenty two. Okay, okay, and so you've got a really special guest for that, and that's going to be something of a surprise. So I won't let the cat out of the bag. But you also did share with me um, who your dream guest would be. Who? Why don't you share that with our listeners? The dream guest and the two hundredth guest episode are the same person. Oh, there you go. Okay, <laughs> okay. So I can't. I I can't. I'll, I'll drop a really big hint for anybody who's a caregiver. They should be able to figure this out. And we're not going to jinx it because we haven't recorded yet, but we're coming up on it in um, less than a month. Um, actually, yeah, well, it's a couple days shy of a month. Is if you are in the caregiving niche, there is one person who is very energetic and very fun to watch and very, very, very educational. And that's what she does. So there you go. Now I'm sure everybody knows who I'm talking about. So watch, watch my social media. Cause once her recording is in the can, I'll probably start dribbling it out. Little bigger, bigger, clues. bigger hints. Bigger hints. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not sure I can get bigger than that one though. <laughs> okay. So Jennifer, um, I also am going to point out to our listeners that your website, fadingmemoriespodcast.com, you have not only your podcast, but you've got articles. You mentioned that. You have a blog. Mm -hmm. um, you have recipes on your website. Tell, tell us a little bit about that. That's, to me, fascinating. <laughs> well, one challenge as somebody gets later into the stages of Alzheimer's or dementia is they they lose abilities in the opposite direction of the way we gain them. So as children, you know, we have to be fed, then we can feed ourselves with our hands, and then we need to be hosed off. And then we learn how to use specialty utensils. So that is what they lose backwards. And it's it's difficult to see your parent or maybe, and I'm assuming your spouse, I haven't had to deal with that. So I can't say for sure when they, like my mom started having trouble eating and we would like cut up her food for her or, you know, we would, we would help, but I didn't ever want to feed her because I just kind of felt like that was, that's taking away what little abilities she might have left. Yeah, that's over and on. She yeah. probably would have fought me on it. So, you know, one of the things that I've done is taken the recipes that I've curated for myself that are healthy, you know, reasonable calories, lower fat, not always because people 
some people with Alzheimer's actually need they the higher calories. Yeah. Yeah. They yeah. need the higher calorie foods. So, I mean, you know, you can obviously reverse what I've done to them, but I've got like um, breakfast muffins that are, you know, eggs and ham and cheese. And, you know, it's something they can, they can grab and eat and just bite. Yeah. And you can like grab and eat it, or you can throw it in your, you know, your bag if you're going out and, you know, like mm. my mom was always good about announcing like she had to use the restroom or she was hungry. me like literally very loudly. Ah, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, oh, so you, you have to kind of carry a bag like you do. With you have to be you got to be prepared. Right? And so I just, you know, we're all busy. And so I, I kind of when I curate the recipes, it's also with so it's healthy, quick, tasty, because the rest of it is irrelevant if it doesn't taste good. <laughs> But I also like there's recipes that I make for myself or my, you know, we make for each other that I wouldn't make for my mom because it might have nuts or small like possible choking hazards in them. Oh, so, yeah. You, know. you gotta you gotta think that way too. If you're feeding in essence a toddler. Yeah. And a lot of people and I I kind of grapple with this, you know, there's a lot of the toxic positivity. It's like, they're not children. Don't treat them like children. Well, yes, that's very true, but it's their abilities, like a child's abilities increase, your loved one's abilities decrease. At some point, their, their abilities are very similar. Now, that doesn't mean to treat, I mean, I, they have memories and a life and, you know, they were, they're adults. So you don't want to treat them like a toddler, but you also need to realize that they're well, their abilities are, are much like a toddler. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. I and there are safe, safety issues. Yeah, yeah. I, so I struggle with it when, because I'm not ever really sure why people say that on social media. And sometimes I ask and I don't get a response. It's like, are you saying that because somebody's, you know, talked down to them or ignored them, talked over them? Or are you just frustrated because, you know, your mom is eating her mashed potatoes with her hands? Like I, I would prefer not to watch my mom do that, but you know, at one point it's like, do you want to feed her or do you want her to feed herself? So you just have to accept that there's some changes that you have to make. And so I put the recipes out there as just kind of like a simple way of like, you know, here's some, like we just got an Instapot for our camping. And so now, now the website has got some Instapot recipes on there because that's what I'm into. I'm trying to learn how to make the thing work pretty well. <laughs> nice. And, you know, and it's like, if it's, if it's a recipe, like there was one for chicken fried rice and it's like, that sounds good. And it's something you could eat with a spoon. So mm -hmm. it's something that, mm -hmm. you know, my mom could have done pretty easily and you know, it was healthy. So that's why nice. I share those. Okay. Um, all right. So I'm going to, um, well, I think that's fascinating that you uh, have gone to the extent of adapting recipes for this this um, group, and thank you for doing that. Um, okay, so I'm going to go to listener questions. Um, let's see, I got to scroll up to the top. Uh, okay, um, Jennifer, are all of your episodes? available on your website. And I'm going to repeat the website again, because I haven't been doing a good job of that. Fadingmemoriespodcast.com. And so the question pending is, are all of your episodes there? Or I guess, where can we find them if not? They are all there. And pretty sure all of them are, because I changed websites a little over a year ago, changed the style, as one does. <laughs> so there's links to Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and YouTube. So you can't listen to them directly on the website, but it'll take you. It takes you to that place. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And so you can listen to it. You mentioned Spotify. So someone could go to Spotify on their phone and listen to it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the really um, fantastic things about a podcast for this audience is you can listen to podcasts anytime and mm -hmm. um, you can listen to it while you're busy doing other things. And um, 
you know, you might really need some help. You might really need like you're it's the middle of the night and you're freaking out and you there's your podcast. It's there. Um, so brilliant. Thank you. Kudos to you. Um, that was that was the that was the impetus for actually also creating it is I am a reader. I love to read. I can only read books on Alzheimer's and caregiving and all that for they're like textbooks. And you only read them for so long before it, they're just a very heavy subject. Yeah, it's too much. And then I was spending copious amounts of time trying to find answers on the internet, which, okay, that that wasn't bad. None of them worked. And I, I would come away with like literally eyes watery, them eyes blurry. And I'm like, people who are taking care of their loved one at home don't have time for all this reading and all this internet research. You need like people that have been in the trenches or are in the trenches still that you can listen to. And, yeah. and yeah. I've had people comment, I really should listen, but I'm afraid it's depressing. It's not depressing. <laughs> it's helpful. It's, and it's sometimes uplifting. Yeah. I try to make them fun and interesting and informative. Yeah. 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 Okay. And okay. So the other question I have here is, um, is your podcast, are some of your podcast topics helpful for people who are caregivers not involving dementia? Probably. I do a lot of, um, not a lot, but I do self-care like the yoga for caregivers. There was another one that I did about a year ago. His name is slipping my mind, but it basically had lots of caregiving tips in it. The gal wrote a book and she basically just went through the book and read a lot of the the tips that were her favorite. And so it's one of those podcasts you probably need to listen and write down notes or get a book. Right. Um, I also do episodes on aging well, brain okay. health, you know, because yeah. especially for the younger caregivers like myself and the millennials, those are quite, you know, they, it, it's all tied together, you know, so it's like, you, I talk about estate planning, which is obviously your thing, and brain health. And I have a, a geriatrician that talks regularly, although she's getting really busy, so it's getting harder to connect together. But she talks, we've done frailty, incontinence, which I know people are like, oh, God, I don't want to listen to that. <laughs> it's really actually very helpful. Uh, what else did we talk about? Well, we just recorded how to prevent dementia, which really cannot guarantee. There's not like a guaranteed There's way no. to Right. prevent it but we talk about a lot of things and in that particular episode which is coming out at the end of october uh you get to hear a lot more about me and what i'm doing so i don't okay. always talk about myself <laughs> so there are there are things there for everyone mm -hmm. and not just the dementia based caregiving mm -hmm. um okay well th thank you i think that's the end of the audience questions and i I just really want to thank you so much for being here. I'm reminding people it's Fading Memories podcast. You can find it wherever you get your podcasts, but also on Jennifer's website. You can find links to all her episodes, her nearly 200 episodes. It's very impressive. Very impressive. <laughs> you're, doing, you're doing great work, and I'm really honored that you allowed me to spotlight you. Well, thank you for so, spotlighting me. I, it's... It's a topic people don't really want to jump into. And then once you really need to, unfortunately, yeah. and that's why I try to keep it really upbeat. And I don't want to record something like this and, and go away from the computer and feeling like, Oh my gosh, that was, whew, that was heavy. It was rough. Yeah. 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 I don't want, I don't want to feel that way. I've been through all that stuff. So. Right. Yeah. You know. Well, thank you very much for being here. We really appreciate it. Thank you. And you're welcome. And thank you, everyone, for, for watching, for listening. I look forward to connecting with you next time. Thank you for joining us today for another episode of Absolute Trust Talk Live. If you enjoyed listening in, then don't forget to subscribe. You can find us on Apple Podcasts or wherever you may listen by searching Absolute Trust Talk. While you're there, we would also love for you to leave us a review. And then why not share your favorite episodes with family, friends, or colleagues, too? You can find all of our shows and corresponding show notes by visiting AbsoluteTrustCouncil.com. You'll also find a variety of other free resources, 
including our eBooks, videos, blogs, presentations, and more. If you need help with your estate planning or administration, we also offer a free discovery call to help get the process started. You can find more information on booking your session by visiting absolutetrustcouncil.com slash scheduling. Don't forget to keep an eye out for our next live episode in two weeks. If you join us for the broadcast, you can submit questions during the show. But if not, don't worry. You can always get in touch with us by sending a quick message to info at absolutetrustcouncil.com. Thanks again for listening. We'll see you soon.